So we have taken a look at the basic elements of using the if function. Let's take a look at how we might handle some more complex conditions that occur within the if function. Right? Remember the first argument to the if function is a condition, a logical condition or a predicate and that can be very complex. Till now what we have considered in that position were all simple things. Let's take an example. Okay, so let's say, again, these are all stuff that I've just made up to illustrate this. These are not necessarily realistic in any sense. So I've got a bunch of players and uh, these are basketball players and column B to tells us how many points each of them scored during, let's say, a season and uh, column C tells us how many assists they played a part in uh, during the season. Okay, now I've come up with this thing called league rating just made up stuff this is nothing real and I've said that the league rating for a player is based on a complex condition the condition is if the points are greater than 15 and the player had at least four assists right so it's based on both the points the player scored and the assists that the player participated in so if the points are greater than 15 and the player had at least four assists then the rating is computed as two times points plus assists okay not you don't multiply assists by two points just point by two just points are multiplied by two okay otherwise the rating is simply points plus assists okay there's no logic or rationale for this I just made it up to illustrate an if function with a complex condition that's all okay so now our job is to convert this into an Excel formula so the uh, we're going to say if condition then result if condition is true result if condition is false okay so we want to write a formula for d2 and we are going to copy that to d3 colon d15 once again of course it may not be d15 it could be d1000 okay so again like good excel designers we're going to isolate the assumptions so the point cutoff which is the number 15 and the assist cutoff which is the number 4 Right, so I've just called it league rating point cutoff 15, league rating assist cutoff 4. Now I could simply have put the numbers 15 and 4 and left it as it is. But then later on when you look at the spreadsheet, just two numbers sitting out there 15 and 4 with nothing to tell what they are uh, would be not very useful. So that is why we add this descriptive text to tell us what that number 15 is all about and what the number 4 is all about. Okay, so we've got that and we now want to uh, write the formula. So we've got the assumptions isolated. We are going one step further. Okay, rather than having to refer to this as just, uh, let's say, dollar $H2, we don't want to refer to this particular cell as dollar $H2. Instead, we want to refer to it by a name. So what I'm doing is I'm saying let's name this cell itself as LRPT cutoff or we could just call it point cutoff point underscore cutoff just a name that I've given it and we've already seen earlier in the lecture on named ranges uh, how to name a particular cell similarly I have named this cell as LR assist cutoff or you could have just called it assist underscore cutoff and points underscore cutoff the name is your choice these are just the names I chose uh, may not be great names but that's what I've chosen Okay, so we've got that and these here are your assumptions uh, named as this, named as this and first thing we want to do is to just take a look at the condition all by itself, right? And then we'll put this, incorporate this into an if function. Okay, so the condition says that the number of points is greater than the point cutoff or the number of points is greater than 15 and the number of assists is greater than 4, right? So the well, the, that, that translates into B2, which is the number of points, greater than the name for this cell, the name for the cell that contains 15, LR point cutoff, C2 greater than LR assist cutoff. Okay? So the, the thing that says both of these conditions are true, you construct that by using the AND function. You're saying AND this condition, comma, that condition, which means both of these conditions are true. That's what AND would say. If any one of them is false or if both of them are false, then the whole result of this is going to be false. 
Otherwise, if both of them are true, the result is going to be true. Okay, so this whole expression is going to either be true or false. Okay, so this is true only if both conditions are true. That is, if this is true and if this is true. Okay, so that's the condition part. Of course, we have still not looked at the if part. We have just said, okay, this is how you express the condition. Okay, just to give you an example of uh, some of the points, say this thing satisfies only one condition. That is, it doesn't satisfy the point condition, it satisfies only the assist condition. So both of these, they satisfy only the assist condition, uh, not the point condition. This doesn't satisfy the point condition because we want the points to be greater than 15. Okay. This satisfies both. This satisfies only one. Satisfies both. Satisfies only one, etc., etc. Okay, and if it's blank, it means it doesn't satisfy any condition. So this is just explaining the condition to you and how this works. Okay, so the formula then will be the following: if. So now we are putting the and that we had earlier into our if function. So the first part of the if function, of course, we already know is the uh, condition, and the condition, as we saw from the earlier slide, is and. B2 greater than LR point cutoff and C2 greater than uh, LR assist cutoff. So that whole thing itself is the result of a function, the AND function. And that itself is the first part of IF. And then we say, if this is true, then the rating is 2 times B2 plus C2. Otherwise, the rating is just B2 plus C2. Okay. So that's the formula that we are going to write for this particular cell. And once we have done that, we can copy the formula over. Okay, so the beauty of giving names to these cells is that we don't now have to deal with absolute addresses. So the formula reads a little more clearly and in this particular case it's all the more important because as it is the formula looks complex, right? Within if you've got an AND expression and then you've got this and this, uh, this and this. So it's already pretty complicated and if on top of that we had absolute addresses here, the formula would be pretty forbidding. So anything we can do to simplify it, make it user friendly is good. Okay, so that's how this thing works. You can now copy it for all the remaining cells. Let's focus our attention a little more closely on the formula itself. So the formula says if and B2 greater than LR point cutoff, comma C2 greater than LR assist cutoff. Notice that this is the first argument to the if and the first argument itself is a result of a function and therefore that function and has its own opening parentheses and closing parentheses. Okay, and of course that function and itself this time has two arguments. The first argument is B2 greater than uh, LR point cutoff, that's one condition. And the second argument is another condition. Now it is possible that your and may have many more conditions in which case you just separate you know, them with additional commas. So that's the first part. And the second part or the second argument to if is to these the points is the rating if the condition above is true, that is the whole condition above is true, not one of them, but the whole condition is true, which means that both of them are true. So result if the above condition is true and this is result if the above condition is false and that's the closing parenthesis. Okay? So instead of looking at the whole function, uh, if function call in one single line, I've just broken it up across three lines to make things clear for you. Of course, when you write it in Excel, you're not going to write it across three, separate, three or four separate lines as I have shown here. This is just for convenience and for understanding. When you write it in Excel, you're going to write it as one single line as I have already shown in the previous slide. Okay, so now I've copied the formula for all the remaining cells. Now, whenever you write complicated formulas like these, you may write the formula once, just copy the value for many other cells it's always good practice to verify some of the results. Okay, So just take a few things at random or even some very special cases that meet certain borderline conditions. Go look at them and see if your formula has done the job correctly. Right? You, you cannot just assume that the formula you wrote at first is absolutely correct and it does the job. You should verify and make sure that it's, uh, that it's actually correct and it actually gives the correct results in several situations. That's always a good idea. In fact, 
even for experienced programmers, this is a very good guideline. Okay, uh, it just doesn't mean that the more experience you get, the more uh, the better you become at writing complex conditions. My experience has been no matter how many years of programming you've done, you always make mistakes in these kinds of things. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry for these conditions. So we've introduced the AND function. Similarly, there's another function called OR. Let's take a look at an example for that. Once again, a highly concocted, contrived kind of scenario. So I'm taking the same example as before points and assists and I'm saying there's another kind of rating called professional rating. Once again, this is no basis in reality. It's just some stuff that I made up. Uh, and this one says if a person has uh, 18, uh, at least uh, if the number of points is greater than 18 or if the person has at least seven assists, which means the number of assists is greater than or equal to seven, then the rating is three times points. Otherwise, the rating is just the number of points. Okay. Again, no logic, just something to illustrate the use of the OR function. That's it. Okay. So the OR function looks exactly like the AND function. So it's going to, uh, your again, we have isolated more assumptions. Again, you know, illustrating good practice every step of the way. So now we are saying professional rating points cut off, professional rating assists cut off. And of course, like before, we are going to name those cells. Uh, this time PR point cut off, PR assist cut off. And once you do that, the OR condition will look like this. OR parentheses B2 greater than PR point cut off, comma C2 greater than PR assist cut off. Right? The way the OR function works is it the result is true if either of the conditions is true. In the case of AND, the result was true only if both the conditions were true. In the case of OR, the result is true if either condition is true. And of course, that's what we mean by the English word OR. If this is true or this is true, then the whole thing is true. Okay. So if true, if at least one condition is true, that is if points cut off or B2 greater than point cut off or C2 greater than assist cut off. And the formula is going to look like this. If OR B2 greater than PR point cut off, comma C2 greater than PR assist cut off. Notice again, the first argument condition is itself the result of a function. Therefore, the R function has its own opening and closing parentheses. And then the condition, uh, the result if the condition is true and result if the condition is false. Okay, so once again, verify some of the, copy it for the remaining cells, verify some of the results. This completes our discussion of the if function and the and and or functions.